Hello folks. So in the last two videos, I covered Python logic inside app.py to receive the text from HTML frontend and then included steps to clean the text. Okay, as well as I turned this text uh, data into numerical data so that our machine learning model can uh, you know understand this data to provide predictions. Okay, I then passed uh, variables as a parameter to home.html file so that you can uh, see the output on your web page. In this video, I am going to build our frontend home.html page to include elements like text box so that user can enter the text in the text box. Uh, I will also include a button element so that when user clicks uh, on that button, it gets posted, the text gets posted to the server for processing purpose. Uh, and you will, you will get a corresponding probability score as well as corresponding sentiment on the web page. So watch this video till the end to get the complete information. Folks, this is Nitin welcoming you to the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data, Hadoop, uh, virtual reality and cloud computing. You can acquire the related skill sets in order to advance your career in these fields. This channel takes on hands-on approach to build AI based products and applications. So if you are new to this channel, then consider subscribing to our channel. Or if you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about the hottest technologies of 21st century. So let's open our home.html page. Okay, so this is our home.html page. Okay, and uh, as I told you in the interactive video, I used a template from boot snip to build uh, this uh, home page okay i just uh, utilize the tab portion of the code okay and uh, uh, rest all other elements uh, like text box buttons alerts heading etc i added from my side this web page is built using bootstrap uh, framework which gives this web page a capability to provide responsiveness meaning page can be opened very well on laptop, mobile or tablet. Uh, the web page won't get distorted if same page gets opened on different devices. So every web page has head tag as well as body tag. Okay, so I'm talking about this tag, head tag. Okay, and if I scroll down, uh, there will be a body tag as well. Okay. Uh, so lot of a lot of CSS code is included here. So here we have body tag. Okay, head tag is closed here. Okay, so in the head tag we generally have necessary CSS files like uh, so these are the inline inline CSS statements which we have included. But you can have a CSS file as well uh, defined here. Okay, so you can have a CSS file just like which is defined here. Okay which is text slash CSS. So this is a CSS file, which is a styling dot CSS. You can define that CSS file um, as well as you can define JavaScripts. So these are the JavaScript, okay, which you can define, which are uh, uh, denoted by dot JS. Okay, so these are all JavaScript files. So you can include the JavaScripts as well in the head tag. Okay, then you can include the title tag and other metadata. And in the body tag, we actually have the page layout as well as various other elements. Okay. So body tag is the one uh, where the user, uh, actual user actually interacts with the pa web page by clicking on button or, you know, uh, clicking on dr drop down, selecting a radio button, uh, selecting a checkbox, entering some information inside the text box, so and so forth. So you can, as you can see here in the head tag, uh, right? We have JavaScript as I showed you earlier uh, to animate uh, certain portions of the web page uh, or to uh, you know perform certain other functions. Uh, we have these inline CSS or cascade style sheet uh, statements as well to beautify our web page. 
I'm not going to uh, you know dive deeper into HTML or CSS details here. Maybe I will create a separate series for that because uh, uh, that doesn't come into the scope of this video. So let's move on to the body portion. Okay, so body portion starts here. So uh, explaining the individual tag is again outside the scope of this video. And as I mentioned earlier, I may create a separate series covering only flask details or the HTML or cascade size sheet related details. Please comment on comment box if you want to create separate, uh, want me to create separate series for flask. And I will create a video series if I get huge response regarding that. So moving on the code inside this div tag here as shown here. Okay. So the code inside this div tag is nothing but individual tabs. Okay. So let me show you the tabs real quick. So these are the tabs I'm talking about image captioning, then sentiment analysis, sentiment analysis of, of images, object detection. So I, as a part of this template, I utilized this portion only. Uh, using that template this particular portion okay I included by myself so the code inside this div tag as I told you is nothing but these tabs okay so you can see here that uh, I have a tab for uh, image captioning okay and which is shown here okay image captioning so this is the tab okay as you can see this is the nav tabs bar where we have tab for image captioning and if I scroll down I have it for sentiment analysis which is this one then if I scroll down a bit okay then we have one tab for sentiment analysis of images here okay which is this one then I have it for object detection which is this one and so and so forth okay so one thing to note here is that tab of image captioning is by default current if I refresh it let us say it will point out to this okay so by default it shows uh, the uh, uh, control on this image captioning uh, tab right okay so and it is uh, by default it is always active okay so this is because we have kept it as active using a class called active so if i show you here so you can see for image captioning I have this class defined as active so that's why this particular tab is always uh, stays as active or by default it stays as active tab uh, here okay so this is the class which governs that okay so moving on once I am uh, in a specific tab I need to include the content or elements like these these are the elements heading then upload here alert in the sentiment analysis we have this text box uh, button alerts right so once I'm in this specific tab I need to include the content or elements for that tab okay L just like mentioned here text box button alerts headings for showing uh, the uh, for so sentiment for showing the sentiment probability section for showing the probability score and so and so forth okay so we will uh, we utilize tab panel related div tag to include all these elements okay so as i sh if i can show you if i let see let me scroll down so they this is the tab panel okay so we utilize this tab panel related div tag okay to include all these elements in our front end web app our sentiment analysis related content starts here okay so you can see here that first I have a heading right here upload image to see the captions which is this uh, sorry let me actually show you something related to sentiment analysis okay so this one so I have first I have this heading enter the text to get the sentiment which is this text right so you can see here that I have uh, heading enter the text to get the sentiment inside this h2 tag which is shown here okay then inside this uh, call md6 okay so inside this call md6 
six div tag okay uh, i have included a form here which is shown here which is this form okay here to first define a text box using this input tag which is this this one so this is the input tag to define the text box which is this one okay okay and uh, using this input tag and defining uh, this class as form control okay then there is uh, one more uh, input tag for submit button as you can see right underneath that this one i'm talking about this one so this is the another input tag for submit button so left hand side is where we input the values using the text box here okay and right hand side we expect an output based on the machine learning predictions and for that i'm defining this uh, first set of code okay in call md3 okay div tag where i'm first defining heading tag h1 as you can see here for showing the sentiment which is this one this heading okay so this is this heading tag okay for showing sentiment value as either positive or negative then i'm defining alert code where class is alert primary so this is the alert code uh, sorry this is the alert code and this particular sh depicts this blue color box okay and this is the this blue color box is nothing but alert uh, element okay to show the output value in this blue box section in the next line i'm checking if our machine learning model returned any probability value here you can see okay so if i'm checking if our machine learning model returned any probability value if yes then display the sentiment value enclosed within this uh, two braces okay please note that uh, this is same sentiment parameter we returned in app.py file so this parameter or the variable is the one we return in app.py file here this one okay so this is this variable uh, we were actually sent, uh, uh, passing this variable uh, as a parameter to this home page and now in the home page uh, we are receiving it here okay right so this is shown here so this is the same parameter uh, so coming back please note that one more thing uh, please note one more thing here that whenever we want to check any condition using if statement uh, or wants to use for loop as a matter of fact inside flask html code then we use single braces here okay followed by a uh, percentage sign okay and then checking the if condition here just like this okay in in case of uh, for loop uh, 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 it is replaced by for okay so in case of if it will be for loop here okay so any variable from app.py can be received inside this html code using double braces here so double braces depicts the variables single braces followed by uh, percentage sign shows any condition or for loop similarly we can write the similar code getting the probability value as well as image which in our case is an emoji so here i'm utilizing the same code to get the probability value and down below i'm utilizing similar kind of code to get the image value here okay so um, we can show this emoji inside the img tag so here i'm uh, showing the image inside the img tag and again this image variable is the same we passed here here we passed right in the app.py file so we are receiving here inside this img tag okay so once this is done then we can run our web app by going inside the directory where our app resides so let me show. so this is my anaconda prompt okay now what i need to do first here is uh, we need to go inside the directory where our app resides when i'm talking about app i'm talking about this ai underscore app entire folder 
okay so let me uh, go inside that directory first so and then my code resides in g directory and in the folder this okay changing the directory to this and inside this folder i have this folder called ai app okay so if you want to see the content of this you can see that we have app.py sentiment analysis h5 same files here right then we have static and then templates static and templates folder as well okay so now for once inside we are this uh, directory uh, okay we also need to activate the environment where we have developed our app so i have i can activate the ai app here okay because uh, i actually developed this entire application inside the conda environment or anaconda environment so i will utilize the environment by using activate ai underscore app and now uh, my environment is activated okay this is the way we can activate our environment okay so then i will invoke the app.py file by using python app.py okay please remember i am inside this ai app folder okay where this app.py file resides so i'm calling this file invoking this program python app.py so you can see uh, that it has provided a url here right which we can copy and paste it in our browser to see our app in action please note that currently your app is running on local flask server so you need to deploy this uh, web app on any remote server or virtual machine or platform as a service environment to make it available for outside world. I'm going to cover the topic of deploying this app on cloud environment so that everyone can uh, everyone outside uh, can see it in the upcoming videos. Okay, so stay tuned. So let me copy paste this. Uh, uh, URL into my browser okay so when I enter this URL you can see our application got opened and when I click on sentiment analysis you can see that text box uh, button sentiment uh, sent, uh, section to show the sentiment section for probability so let's check that let's enter this text and click on submit button so when i entered uh, i clicked on submit button uh, the request sent to the uh, you know the machine learning model residing on server and it provided or predicted the result as negative the sentiment came out to be negative here right and the probability associated with negative sentiment was 0 0.05 meaning uh, that's kind of a uh, s strong negative sentiment and you can see the emotion as well uh, you know that emoji is shown as very sad here right so guys uh, yeah this is it uh, for this video to conclude I explained the code for home that HTML to show how uh, you know how the tabs are defined and how can uh, you know how can we define several HTML elements as well as receive values from app.py to home.html so this actually concludes the front end portion now as a part of a next uh, video i'm going to show you how to basically deploy this app on the cloud platform okay so folks let me ask you a question from uh, this video uh, how can we define python variables inside html file please post your comments in the comment section given below so that i can get a chance to incorporate your feedback you can also ask your technical questions in the comment section i will be glad to answer your questions if you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with me guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching thank you